Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we have a gear review. So today we're going to be talking about the 2021 Nemo Dragonfly 2P bike pack. And this is brand new this year from Nemo with updated features specifically for bike packing. But what I also like about these new type of bike pack tents is that they have these short stick poles. Actually, that's a trademark word by Big Agnes. They have these shorter poles, which allow you to actually put it in your backpack. So I've been going through a lot of these different types of tents, trying to figure out which one I'm gonna be taking on trail with me as I try to reduce some of my weight when I prepare for a longer through hike. So today, we'll first go through the specs and text, a little bit of an overview of the tent and my favorite features. And then we'll go through some special features that Nemo added to this that may be different from the Copper Spur. And then we will also go through some of the, I'll say, opportunities for design improvements that I thought could happen on the next version of the Dragonfly to make it a really good tent. We'll talk a little bit about the dog friendliness of the tent. And then I was able to take this out the last month for some field testing for three different types of trips. And so I have initial results from those field tests. So anyways, let's get this going. So on a spec by spec basis, the Nemo Dragonfly is very similar to the Copper Spur bike pack. And so that's really what I'm gonna compare it with today as I talk through some of the different details of each of the tents. Now, the Nemo Dragonfly has an 88 by 50 by 45 inch design. And so that means it's a trapezoidal base, just like the Copper Spur. However, if you look at the actual width dimensions, the 50 by 45 versus the Copper Spur, which is a 52 by 42, I'll say it's a little bit less aggressive in terms of that angle of that trapezoid, which allows two sleeping pads, regular size mummy sleeping pads to fit a little bit better without running up to the sides of the tent versus the Copper Spur. When I weighed it out, it did come in at its stated trail weight at two pounds and 13 ounces, where the copper spur comes in at about three pounds on the nose. So you save a little bit of weight, about three ounces by getting the Nemo Dragonfly. However, you also sacrifice that a little bit in the foot room space. So where the copper spur has a more vertical design, and allows for a bigger foot end space, the Nemo really has an angled tail end, which may or may not be your cup of tea. And so if you are trying to fit two people into this tent, it may be a little bit of a tight squeeze if you're trying to sit on opposite ends of the tent. You probably won't be able to do that. However, when I took it out with Remy, it actually was a little bit better in terms of the foot area because in the copper spur, there's that surge space on the end of the tent, which Remy would always get up and, and actually catch his fur on when he would turn around. And also when you have your stuff stored in the end of the copper spur. It tends to hang a little bit in the way in terms of that vertical space. And so that's only an issue if you have a dog and you're trying to use that foot end of the vertical space. The Nemo, I thought in terms of space also was probably gonna be better for more of a one plus or one plus dog type of tent and not necessarily a full two P tent. It will be a little bit of a tight squeeze. Though the, the room to stand up, I'll say, or halfway stand up, and or sit up straight in the tent was very, very good and very livable. The peak height of the Dragonfly is 41 inches and the floor area is 29 square feet total. So the poles for the Nemo Dragonfly come into this nice poly bag, which I actually like better than the other cinch sacks. It doesn't have a lot of the extra cordage. Now all you have to do is flip this open to get the poles out and it's a little bit lighter weight than a normal bag. It's a hub and pole type design. It actually has two different hubs that are color coded depending on the side of the tent. The gray end of the tent, because it is color coded, is the larger end of the tent, while the green end of the tent is the shorter end of the tent. It also does have an extra pole, just like the copper spur that sits on top and isn't incorporated into any part of the pole set. One thing that you might want to consider though is that this especially if you're backpacking with this, is that you could easily lose this tiny little pole and tiny piece. I've actually misplaced it once already, but something to consider if you want something that's a little bit easier or has all your poles connected. You may want to try out for a different tent, but otherwise, if you think you're not going to lose this tiny pole, then it's no big deal. The floor is a 20D Sil Poly Ripstop Nylon Blend. 
and the Rainfly is a 15D Sil Poly Rips Up Nylon Blend. So the floor of the Nemo Dragonfly is a little bit thicker than the Copper Spur, where the Copper Spur is about a 15 by 20 D. So if you're thinking of durability of it, the Dragonfly probably has a more durable floor, just depending on how tough you are and tense, and if you're gonna have any type of footprint with the tent. The setup of the tent is fairly easy. I actually had to read the directions. So I'm gonna read the directions because there's a couple of funky things that I don't quite get on the setup. So I'm gonna do that. Just to make sure I was setting it up properly because it has a different type of design than what I'm used to. But after you figure out the color coding and you're able to stick in, this, in the poles into the grommets, it is very easy to set up the second, third, fourth time as you get used to that color coding and where each of the poles go. It does have the overhead light pockets, which are an orange color in this tent, which I actually really like. It gave that nice glow to the tent and allowed me to turn my headlamp on a little bit lower and not waste the battery out on the headlamp. It is kind of tiny though, so Nemo probably could make it a little bit bigger, but the fact that it's a light diffusing tent, it's a little bit easier on the eyes when you're in the tent. I thought it was a really good feature. There is overhead gear storage, which was one of my favorite things about this tent is that a lot of times so you just have the side pockets or you have to get an overhead gear loft. But this is in a really good place to actually store your extra gear, your stuff sacks, anything you wanna put in there. And it isn't overly cumbersome to try to stick your things up there. Plus, I think you could probably rig it in a way where you could stick an iPad or any type of tablet if you like to watch movies and you wanna lean back and watch movies. The separate gear storage on the side by the doors is also off the floor, which I prefer. I don't like when it's too close to the floor and you roll over and you've got like gear right in your face as you roll over. So it's a good spot when you're on your sleeping pad within arm's length to be able to stick up your hand, grab your headlamp or whatever you have near the sides of the door. It does come with a repair kit, which I've had to use already and I'll talk about that a little later on. And it does require eight stakes to stick it out without the guy lines. With the fly design, Nemo actually has two stakes that go onto the sides of the fly to be able to secure it, which is different than copper spur. Copper spur, you only need six stakes total in order to stake out the tent without the guy lines. Now there are only three guy out points on this tent. And then there is one venting point on the larger end of the tent that you can tie and stake out in order to allow more ventilation on the tent. So those are the basic specs of the tent and I do have the Copper Spur bike pack as well as the Nemo Dagger and so if there's any other questions just put them in the comments below and I can try to answer those questions comparing the two tents if you guys are trying to make a decision between these two tents. Now moving on to my favorite things about the tent. One, it is lightweight. It's about three ounces lighter if you just measure the tent body, the fly, and the poles, three ounces lighter than the copper spur. And the best thing about these new bike packing tents is that they can fit horizontally into your pack. And with the dragonfly, I was actually able to get it into a even smaller stuff sack. So I was able to get it into a four liter C to Summit stuff sack. So just visually showing you guys, when I actually put it into my bag, it fits very nicely side by side, right into my backpack. If you put it in something like this other stuff sack, you save about two and a half ounces. The ounces of the Nemo bag that it comes with is three ounces and the ounces of this C to Summit stuff sack is half an ounce. So you do save some weight by putting it into a different stuff sack if you aren't gonna be tying it onto your bike. The other thing I liked about this tent is that it does have higher bathtub floors and it felt more secure within the tent, especially against rain because the waterproof sides of the tent go up a lot higher versus the copper spur. So allowed for that more secure weather protection. And because I have a dog and the hair gets caught more in the screens than the actual tent, <laughs> it was actually easier to clean out the dog hair and clean out the tent from the dog because of those higher bathtub walls. So I really like that feature of the higher bathtub floors just to allow for better weather protection, especially if the rain is blowing in from the wind. The other thing I liked about this tent is that you're able to actually vent 
from the inside of the tent. So with the copper spur to actually get the vent to go open in the back, you have to go outside the tent. You can't reach around and in to be able to vent it. So it was very convenient just to be able to reach out into the fly and open up the vent. And there are vents on two sides. Plus you've got the venting design of the higher end of the dragonfly to be able to allow for that airflow throughout the tent and reduce the opportunity for condensation to occur. And I did not have any condensation issues. This time of year, you can get condensation issues because of the moisture, especially in Colorado and with the rain or with the snow coming in that you get in April and in May. Another thing I liked about this tent was the large vestibules. So the copper spur has on each side nine square feet feet of vestibule space on each side and the dragonfly has 10. And I was able to get on just one side of the vestibule, a my backpack plus Remy's pack plus boots plus everything into that one side of the tent and still be able to close the rainfly with me in it in the vestibule with all the gear as well before I got in the tent when it was raining outside. So huge vestibule space the way that this tent is designed. And I mentioned it earlier, but the trapezoidal design only having that angle from a 50 to 45 inch was actually really great from a dog standpoint because I was easily able to get Remy in the foot of the tent right next to my sleeping pad and not have him feel like he was squished or that he wanted to move up a little bit closer to me, but there was definitely enough room for another sleeping pad or for a dog bed at the foot of that tent. And then the last thing I really loved, I mentioned it earlier, is that overhead gear storage. I didn't know how much I liked it till I slept in a different tent that didn't have it. And I was constantly wanting to put stuff above me and I wanted just to have a place that was up off the floor and not have to reach over into the foot part of the bed. And this that gear storage in that loft area was great to have available. Now I'll go through some of the special features that Nemo has incorporated into the bike pack version of the Dragonfly. The first one is the color. The color is great. It is this gray, I think they call it storm, grayish and blue with this green, the boreal green color to it. It's supposed to be for stealth camping though. I mean, if you're bike packing and you have a bike, you're not being too stealthy, I guess. But one thing about the darker color is that it does not attract bugs as much. Bugs are attracted to those bright fluorescent type neon type colors. And so if you're getting a brightly colored tent, it's just gonna attract bugs a little bit more if you live in a buggy area. The other thing that's great about this color of tent is that if the sun is rising at 4.30 in the morning, it allows for less sunlight to shine through, I guess, or to pop on through. And so it just allows for a darker atmosphere within the tent, especially in the morning, or if you're trying to take an afternoon siesta, that darker color is actually really great to have within the tent. One of the special features too, with this sort of stealth look that they're giving for the tent is that they decided by design to not have reflective guy out cords, which I don't really like is that I prefer to have the reflective guy out cords because I tend to trip on the guy out cords. But just note that when you do get the guy out cords, they are not reflective. So you may want to replace them with reflective guy out cords. The other special feature is going to be this landing zone, which is supposed to go into one of the vestibules of the tent. So it's just sort of this sill poly piece that clips in to the tents. And one thing to note is that you can leave it in the rainfly. I tried leaving it a couple times, but it does slip out pretty easily the way that it's designed. It is again, color coded, but I ended up losing this for probably about three weeks before I found it, which it just happened to be in my house, but you can easily lose it. So if you are wanting to keep it just clipped into one of the vestibules, I would suggest either taping the sides up just so you don't end up losing this. And I think most people probably don't realize that they want this until they don't have it. So I ended up really, really liking this feature because when I set up camp and I had everything for the day and I started to either take off clothes or take off Remy's leash or take off his stuff, it was super easy just to be able to throw it into this landing zone and not have to worry about getting it dirty. And also it works out really well, potentially in late fall or 
in the spring for sure when the ground is wet or when it's muddy to, to not have your pack get so dirty or have your clothes or your shoes or any other gear you're using get dirty from the ground outside. So I actually really like this and it's super lightweight still. And so this is something where you could leave this at home if you wanted to save a couple of grams or so, but I found it very, very useful to be able to just have a place to throw your stuff that's dirty and not bring that into the tent with you. The other key feature are these daisy chains that are along the inside of the tent as well. And the copper spurt does have them on the outside. And so when I first set up the Nemo tent, I was thinking to myself, you know, why would they have them on the inside of the tent? It doesn't allow for the airflow. How's, how's your stuff gonna dry? I would rather have them on the outside. But I ended up finding them very useful to hang out my clothes for the night and then be able to quickly get them when I was changing in the morning because they were right inside the vestibule of the tent. So from a convenience standpoint, if you're gonna hang your socks for the night or just hang your sticky clothes out to dry, it's very convenient to have them right outside the door and not have to go completely outside the tent. Though, if you did want to dry your clothes because it would be dry, you could also just roll up the vestibule door to be able to allow that airflow. But I did like them on the inside, though I think it would be beneficial to also have the daisy chains on the outside as well. So maybe one on the inside as far as design goes and one on the outside as well to be able to hang stuff on the outside of your tent to dry. And another one of the new features that is on this Dragonfly version and not even on the current backpacking version of the Dragonfly are these gatekeeper clips. So the way these gatekeeper clips work is that you basically roll it up and they hook on the top and they don't go. They don't go anywhere. And I actually did really like the design of this because you're able to actually unhook it with one hand. So a lot of the times when you roll up the doors, you're in your tent and you realize you have to roll down the doors, you have to get outside your tent and try to get that hook and toggle. And sometimes it's really tight and really, really annoying. And you have to do it with two hands. This, I was able to just reach around and unhook that toggle by just pulling around and I was able to do it with gloves on too. So not only one-handed, but also able to unhook it with gloves. So I really, really liked that new gatekeeper feature. The only thing I would be concerned about at this point in time is as you're rolling and storing your tent, just the abrasion and the wear and tear on your rain fly, especially since it's only a 15 denier over time, but we'll see if that happens. And then the last new feature is obviously the short poles. I already mentioned this love this new pole design and I'm hoping that a lot more tents in the future have this shorter pole design especially since it's so much more convenient to put in your backpack. Now moving on to some of the I'll say room for opportunity or design improvements I think on this tent that I think Nemo could incorporate into the next version or some things we'll say that kind of annoyed me about the tent is that it wasn't for me as intuitive to set up. Now I set up a lot of tents and so I kind of made the rookie mistake and I didn't set this up at home before I took it out. Luckily I was just testing a bunch of tents anyways and I had to go and reread the directions to make sure I was setting it up properly. So just note if this is your first tent, you're not used to setting up tents, Remember to set it up at home. It's not as intuitive as just whipping open the hub and poles and putting them into the right parts of the tent. This took a little bit more time for me to set up and figure out which clips go into where. Even though they were color coded, it was still a little bit confusing of where to actually hook in the clips from the tent to the poles and all around the tent. The other thing that could be room for improvement is the pitch design. So only on one end of the fly, which is the shorter end, are you able to adjust and tighten down that rain fly. So what I found is if there was moisture in the air, if it was raining because it's a nylon rain fly, it'll tend to either wrinkle or it starts to sink and you want to be able to tighten that tent. On the large end of the tent, you're not able to actually adjust for that sinking of the tent because there's no adjustment point on that end of the rain fly. So I think in the future, I would like Nemo to design it so you can adjust for the tension of that tent and be able, be able to get a really nice fit when it's actually raining out so it sheds the water a lot more. 
The other thing I think that could be improved is the integration of the rain fly to the tent to the footprint. Now this rain fly is actually supposed to be integrated into the footprint and the tent. So everything should work into the same grommet hole into the same end of the pole of the tent. Unlike the copper spur where the footprint doesn't integrate at all when you have the tent set up. So what I mean by this is when you have the grommet and the hole of the footprint and you stack it on the tent and then you have to wrap the rain fly around. You can see how wide this is. The room to for the pole to be able to fit in there isn't a lot. I just lost the pen. So the way it is, is when you set it up, Here's a pole going through the tent. And then here is the bottom of the rain fly. And you can see already that there is not a lot of room to be able to tuck under, which you're supposed to be able to tuck the rain fly under. And you have the tent. So hopefully you can see that. And so what happens is that one, the rain fly will pop out and you're not able to get all three integrated, even though they're supposed to stack up and integrate against each other. According to Nemo, I did email them about this to see if it's the design or if there's some other special trick you're supposed to do to prevent the poles from popping out and to keep the rain fly in place. But I'm still waiting to hear back from them. So I'll put any update in the comment once I hear back from Nemo. But for now, what you're gonna wanna do is either stake out the rain fly separately in order to make sure that your rain fly and your tent are actually integrated together for the stability of the tent. So another thing that could have room for improvement is actually the curved design of the continuous door. So it was a little bit flimsy just because of the way that the tent is pitched and how you can't really get a tight fitting tent. And so you really have to use two hands to open the tent instead of just having to be able to open it with one hand. So just something that could be improved. The curve is I'll say a little aggressive or a little bit tight. And so I think if it was a little bit flatter in terms of the curve design, or not as round, we'll say, is that you may be able to get the door zipped or unzipped with one hand instead of having to use two hands to hold down the bottom as you unzip towards the top. And then as I mentioned earlier, on the greater end or the large end of the tent, there is no adjustment on the rain fly. So the only thing you have that would allow to adjust for some tension of the tent is where the venting situation is in terms of that rain fly. And what I found still is that when you still have this tightened and you have this tightened, it will still tend to sink down into the middle of the tent and you can't really get a tight fit when there's moisture in the air or when there is rain outside. The other thing that Nemo could improve is that the Velcro attachments, which are usually where your guy out points are on the tent, are super, super small. So if you look at this, trying to get it around one of the poles and think about you trying to get underneath the rain fly, trying to get this in, can't even do it when <laughs> I'm trying to do it. It's really, really tiny and really, really hard. And I don't have very large hands. So I think if you had larger hands and you're trying to hook the rain fly in via this Velcro into the tent, it may be an issue. Once you get it, it should be fine, but it is really, really small and hard to do. And it almost completely impossible. I'll say impossible because I couldn't do it with gloves on. So just know that this is really hard to do. And you want to make sure that you do Velcro this end of the tent before you start to tighten or hook in that end of the rain fly. It makes it much, much easier. If you put the grommet under the rain fly to get it hooked in and then you try to do this Velcro, it's going to be almost impossible to be able to hook that part of the tent in. 
All right, so moving on to some of the field testing that I was able to do. I didn't get too much severe weather, but I was able to test this in my backyard actually in three days of rain, and it was 100% dry in that rain. There was wind up to 10 miles per hour, and when I was backpacking on one of the nights, it was drizzling and there was a breeze, and I was actually really worried that the tent would start to cave in just because even in a small breeze, you, you tended to get that tent leaning into the side, and I was a little bit worried about the stability of the tent, so I would be concerned in more severe weather weather and higher winds about the tent's ability to actually not cave in and not bend forward. But it held up overnight and I think that's just one of those things with this type of lightweight tent and the design of the tent, you're just going to get that sort of insecurity in the high wind situations. But versus the Copper Spur, I thought the Copper Spur held up much, much better in higher winds and stronger winds than the Dragonfly did. In terms of the rain, the only thing I would be concerned about would be the higher end where it is a venting situation for the rain fly, but I didn't run into any issues with water and wind blowing rain up underneath that rain fly to that higher end of the tent. And as I mentioned before, the vestibules, they go all the way to the ground. So I wasn't concerned about my gear or equipment in the vestibules of the tent in a heavier rain situation. It had great ventilation with the two vents on the side and the vent behind you to allow for that good airflow to come in. And in one of the evenings where where I was testing it out in the rain and it ended up going below freezing and snowing. So a heavy, heavy wet snow for the three season ability, we'll say of the tent and the fact that it held a wet, wet snow. I was actually surprised it didn't cave in. The snow was very heavy and very wet, but I was able to, from the inside of the tent, be able to push and tap the tent to allow that snow to come off. So that was very easy to do without having to get out to the outside of my tent. But because it has a flatter design of that vestibule, that's where the snow tended to pile up a lot more. And so you just wanna make sure if you are in a snow situation that you're constantly trying to bang off that snow from the side of the tent because it will collect and it will sag in that area. And then it also had that area on the top where it collected the snow and sagged in the snow, but it was completely dry on the inside of the tent. And I also had it vented. When it was vented, the snow didn't get into that side of the tent and allow for that moisture to come in, which is different with the copper spur venting situation where the vent is over your head. And so if it is snowing in that copper spur, even though it can shut off some of that snow. If it is blowing snow, it'll blow that snow and that moisture and that rain up into that vent and potentially get it on you as you're sleeping of the way that the tent is designed where the vents are designed. So just talking about some of the issues outside of the weatherproofness of the tent and some of the tent designs, there are some things that I'm actually gonna send the tent back to Nemo on to have a full inspection. So I did have a small tear already in the top of my rainfly, which I did patch and repair, but was a little disappointed because I'm not at heart on my equipment. It was only the third time I had taken it out and I already got a tear in the rainfly. So they're gonna go ahead and inspect that, though I did use the tear aid that it came with to patch it up when I was out in the field. The other thing that's happened is interestingly enough, the inside of the tent appears to be having some delamination of the poly layer from where my sleeping pad was. So I do have a dog and there was no sort of abrasion marks or delamination where Remy was walking or where he was sleeping. It was only underneath my sleeping pad. And so it looks like that top layer of that poly is starting to come off and that's what they're gonna inspect to see if there's a manufacturing defect. And with those abrasion marks, what's interesting, if you flip over to the underside of the tent, that stuff that actually was on the ground could be potential for abrasion or tearing there is nothing there. And so that's why it's interesting that only on the inside of the tent where that layer is, that it's showing some delamination of that poly layer from the tent and there is nothing wrong with the outside of the tent. So those are only, only two major product issues I've found so far with the tent. I actually really, really like this tent. I'm thinking of taking it on the Colorado Trail which, with me. So I'm hoping that there isn't a manufacturing defect with this tent, but I will update this video in the comments below with whatever Nemo finds. And hopefully I can get this tent back in time for when I go on the Colorado Trail later this year. And just talking about the differences in the outside of the pack of the tent, I definitely liked the Nemo packaging 
as far as the stuff sack, a lot better than the copper spur. So with the Nemo one, you, you get a compressible top layer that you can flip over and hook, and it's much easier to grab. Whereas the copper spur just has this hook right here, and you cinch it at the top and pull it over. But what I found is that the top is really, really tiny and doesn't quite hook in. And there's just a lot of extra stuff on this copper spur packaging, not packaging, I'll say on the stuff sack, not as easy to grab on the end, not adjustable, where the Nemo has a nice design, a very nice clean design. You're able to grab it from the clip on the top and it has a nice hook on the bottom too that is adjustable as well. So I just found that the design of their stuff sack was a lot better and less messy and actually just looked a lot cleaner of a design than the copper spur. So that's it. Hopefully you enjoy the contents of the video and found at least some things helpful. And if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to my channel. I talk all about hiking, camping, and backpacking in your general life adventures with you and your dog. Thanks for watching.